So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Travel Exchange on the Italian Riviera. Behind me is Santa Margherita, one of the beautiful coastal towns that line this part of Italy. To the north of me is famed Portofino, and to the south, Rapallo, some of the most expensive real estate in all of Italy, but a beautiful place in which to find fine foods and very warm people. So let's take you now on a tour of some of the sights and sounds of the Italian Riviera. Isaiah Gardella, who we went to see for a long, long time, and uh, this restaurant has been there in their families for several generations. Yeah, and three it's generations. A, three generations, and it's Great the finest food. seafood in the Portofino, Santa Liguria, Santa Margarita. Santa Margarita, Little Liguria area. Very, very nice area. And you said that he represented Italy in a cooking. Yeah, he was an international chef and represented Italy. Uh, in, in the uh, Monterey, in, uh, Monterey in, uh, California, California cookout. In uh, Mali, Switzerland, uh, in Funchal, uh, Madeira Island. Uh, and in Africa too, wasn't it? In Africa and uh, Diari, ah. in Basa. And the restaurant uh, specializes in seafood. Seafood. Pescatori, huh? what does that mean? Uh, if you look at the signal flags, the signal flags spell yeah. fish in Italian. <laughs> These signal flags, as you said. This is an old uh, type sailing rig called the Lantine rig, and they used it in Liguria here. Liguria and the Genoese sailors were the competitors of the, 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 the Bonnie yeah. yeah. And it, uh, it carried wine and ballast and sand. Lantine rig type, uh, very peculiar type um, sailing craft for the Ligurian coast. It's original. Original. The first time we came here, there were 17 members of the family all working here, aunts and uncles, fathers and mothers. This was really a family type um, gallery. Yes, good. this is good uh, Genovese pesto. Pesto la Genovese. Ah, uh, si. Okay. You can see Chiavari and the Lavagna and Sestri. Oh, well, it's if it were clear, weather. yes. I remember he, when I was here as a child. Yeah. Against the pirate, the Saracen. The, the Saracen. Uh, pirate. Oh my god, how old is that castle? Oh, in the uh, f 15th century. 15th century, oh my. Amazing. Well, there is uh, yeah, the, the villa. Uh, before it was. Uh, uh, belonging to a, a, a Genovese family. They call it the municipio, municipal, municipio. Um, 
It's a city hall. It's where all the records of the people are. But I think also it's, a, it's the judicial system. In there. Yeah, one of the early philosophers who uh, uh, motivated Italy to go to, go to become a, a, a democracy. He came from Calvary. The famous thing would be he was a Calvary. Very famous um, 14th century, 15th century philosopher. So this is the store where Nanu had his... Uh... Yep, 1924 to 1930. Your grandfather had a vegetable store there. And he sold the produce from the, from the mountains here. Right here in Chiavi. That's it. Bottega del Formaggio, salami and cheese, fresh. And then codfish, dried codfish, bacala. Look at that thing. That's good, Dan. It's good. What are you going to order? <laughs> this looks more goopy than anything. Well, I'll order a piece of that. Do you want onions? Or Look at you. Look how far, how long, how far back that is. You zero in the most picture yeah, out there? Yeah, sure can.
the apparition of the young fellow, Sebastiano Descalzo, which means without shoes, La Madonna del Orto, in 1610, on the 2nd of July, 1610. Oh, no. Domenico Rossi, excuse me, stop you just for a minute. Hang on. Sì, sì, Giuseppe. Luigi e Leo Ciuccini e mio papà. Tu che ne hai cinque? Mio papà, papà non è del 1884. Mm, ma... Well, okay, now you're looking at several little towns in this Graveglia Valley. You see this Graveglia Valley? There's only several couple of passes. That road that you see down there, the city where the church is, is Arzeng. That's the city of Arzeng. When these towns at noon or 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock on the even hour ring the bells, 
you can identify the cities by the different pitch and tones of the church bells. And what you're looking there is our Zen. And that highway, a road that you see there, goes to what they call the Pass in the Woods, Paso del Bosco. Um, Bosco. And then there are, only two, there are only two passes through these high hills. And the one to the left that we, is the highest one called Mount Zat that's 1,500 meters, about 4,500 feet high. This valley goes for about 60 miles and opens out into the Mediterranean. And what you see here is a lot of hillside terrace farming, a lot of chestnut trees, a lot of potatoes, uh, fruit trees, etc. Now, how much property do the Rossies own here on Mount Zata in terms of acreage? About 776, and originally it was about 200. It was the uh, three generations that went to the gold fields in California starting in 1857 till about 1906 that came back and bought land and bought adjacent parcels of land and created what the ranch is today or the farm, whatever you want to call it. Very interesting. I was saying to see all these terraces when we first came in the early 19. 40s, the late 1940s, after the war, all these terraces had vegetables, potatoes, and hay growing on them. Right now, no one works the land anymore, so these terraces have disappeared where they grow the foodstuffs. In another couple of years, you'll never be able to tell where the terraces are because of the vegetation that's growing on the terraces. Looking for food? You're probably looking for mushrooms. Excuse me. See, you still can't see Manzata. Manzata's right on this side. Looking, probably looking for mushrooms, Joseph. Hey, this was built by my great grandfather. What is it called again? It's called a kasun. A kasun. And what was it used for? This was a shelter from the elements when, the, when they were out working the fields away from the house and a lightning storm because we're up about 2,000 feet high and there are several um, air currents that mix in this Gravalia Valley and there, uh, there's a tendency to have um, thunderstorms and rainstorms. The farmers would then duck into these kasungs and seek shelter until the rain or the thunderstorm was over. And when was this they one built? The natural slate and the natural rocks that you find in these mountains. This was probably built in about 1870 or 1880, something about then. You notice how green the grass is and how the wildflowers are in bloom? Yeah. in here that says this area and the original chapel because this is not the original chapel was dedicated to the Mary St. Mary of the Lorto of Chiavati on the express uh, promise of Antonio Rossi in the year 1879 in an explosion in a mine gold mine in Volcano, California, and um, it was it was built in 1880 after having returned from the California gold fields. What happened was that there was a mine explosion, and there was about 150 miners trapped down below in the mine. They were all in the California gold fields, searching their fortunes. 
and as they were taking the bodies out and the rescue parties got down to the survivors and they were putting one pile of in the dead people and one pile they were putting the live people so that they can evacuate them to bring them to medical aid. This was in 1879. When they got to my grandfather, they said, this guy's dead, throw him in the dead pile. And they threw him in the dead pile. And while they were piling bodies on top of him, he made the vow that if he could get back to Italy, that he would build a chapel in honor of the St. Mary of the Orto, which is St. Mary of the Vegetable Gardens, um, a particular uh, saint down in Cavity, which is about 60 kilometers from here. And they kept piling dead bodies on top of my grandfather. Finally, when they got to put him in the wagon with the rest of the dead bodies, lifting him from the ground, putting him to the wagon, one of the Americans says, I think this guy is still alive. Throw him into the life pile. And he threw him into the life pile. Wow. So when he finished out his term in um, California gold fields, brought some gold back, bought some more area here, came up here and built a beautiful chapel that held about nine or ten people. We're, we'll show you the view here. It's a tremendous view up on top of this hill because at that time there was any, even any roads up to this area. He built a chapel of about capacity of about nine people. Then what happened was after he built the chapel in the early 1900s, people would steal the slate. They would steal things from the church and in a period of about 30 years, Everything was stolen, including the stonework that went with the chapel. So the grandson of the, the man who built it, uh, one of the other grandchildren, came up here and built this little chapel. So on the anniversary on July 4th, our American Independence Day, we come up here and have a mass. And the last time there were 34 cousins uh, having mass. And in fact, uh, my son Joseph was here one time, I think, on the 100th anniversary of the of the uh, building of the chapel. And that's the story of the chapel on top of the hill. And if you look around, you can see all the various little cities that you can see from here.
Oscarlandia, land of the trees. Ted, tell him that I, I do a television show. He wasn't quite understand. I do a travel show on television. Non di agenzie di viaggio, ma fa come quando ti vedi delle volte hai due mostri tutti in giro, come ti vedi a spiaggia, come ti vedi, e non lo fa così. E così ora mi ha mostrato chi? Dove gli altri già, se ti vedi mangiare bene, ti vedi andare in campagna. Non a distanza. Si vedi l'Italia, ti vedi l'Italia. Volevi gli uffici, sono tutti gli uffici. Sì, allora io mi avevo fatto il divorzio, così con le casse. Di no. Mi non sono giudico. Mi, mi, non avevo mai pensato a queste cose di mai. Ah, no, ma, eh, okay. Succede. Ma ora perché lo venivo solo? Lo venivo solo perché se le case di la cosa della mamma. I understand exactly what you're saying. You know, you're not saying that. Io capisco. Io capisco italiano. Io capisco italiano. Io capisco italiano. Ma è brutto bestia. So stirring the bees honey that comes out of the beehives here. Wow. Go ahead, stir it for me. Uh, Very interesting. <laughs> Stirring the bees, honey. Transportazione. Sì. Mi voglio sapere. Venia 5. Io ho fatto 5.000 lire. 5.000 lire. Ma forse non trovo. No. Sì, 5.000. We're talking about we're talking about maybe importing some honey from the hills of um, Liguria to America. And um, I'm just trying to figure out because what kind of a price we need for transportation and certificates and all that. Right. Now this is acacia honey and that other stuff is mille fiore or thousand flower honey. Uh -huh. So okay, mille fiori 
What are some of the other products on the shelves? What else is on the shelves? Or some point some of these products out. These are uh, Yeah, you've seen that. You want to close up? Look, that's uh, Matteo when he was Matteo. a baby. Can you see that? So that's, that's one grandson. of our family members. Yeah, that's one of his grandsons as a trademark. Uh, that's Mille Flora. That's a thousand flower honey. Yeah, but this is acacia honey. I see. You see, what happens is Mille Fiori, the honey coagulates and doesn't hold like acacia. Acacia will always remain clear. Uh huh. I see. And all these other products are stuff that they make here, like uh, hazelnuts. Of course, what's that, Tony? Oh, mushrooms. Mandolin. Huh? Uh, almonds. Uh -huh. Almonds and honey. Well, it's all notch. Uh, and nuts, like walnuts. What's that? Uveta. What's that? Uveta. Uveta. Oh, a little, uh, uh, like um, raisins, raisins and honey for, for gravies and such and for decorating cakes. Right. These are all mountain products brought in the mountain in the hills of um, Liguria. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> this is lunch. Ah, brava. <laughs> yeah.